okay hello everyone this is victor momo from excel moments this video i want to walk you through a solution to a problem i got asked by a classmate former classmate yesterday phone call yeah victor i have an excel problem relax relax what's the problem describe okay so he has check for example in this case three items a b c each of them you know has two possible outcomes you know it could be a yes it could be a no Okay, and he wants to list out you know all the possible combinations okay so yes no yes no yes no so these are the combinations you can write it by hand take it one step at a time you will get it but that's neither flexible nor scalable as in or without a lot of headache okay so but kind of came up with a solution where i can scale these four can scale it to five you know and it kind of just expands you know accordingly okay so i'm going to walk you through my solution to this problem I told him yesterday, I was like, well, this wasn't an easy problem. First of all, you know, um, there wasn't enough time and I just had to think on the spot. I mean, what I came up with even surprised me myself, like, oh, why did I think to that direction? Okay, but well, that's what I thought of at that time. So the solution for me lies in the deck to bin function. Like I said, for me, not that this is the only way to solve it. And somebody's like deck to bin, who even uses that function? What does that function even mean? This function is the decimal to binary function. Okay, so it means you are converting from base 10 to base 2. Okay, now that's enough about the theory, but why did you even think about the function? Okay, because he said to me that he has two possible outcomes. When I think of two, I think of binary, right? It's like a switch on or off. Okay, true or false, yes or no, one or zero. I know that in base 2, you only have numbers up to n minus 1, meaning that you have only zeros and 1. At least I know that from elementary math. So I felt, okay, if I could start with that, that could be, you know, the key to it. Oh, the first thing to come up with is maybe the number of possible outcomes. If I have four items in this case, and each one, you know, can have two outcomes, then the total number of combinations is 2 raised to power 4. If there are five items, it's 2 raised to power 5, okay? So what I've just done here is put the number of items here. This is calculated for me, okay? So now I start. So I kind of think of the sequence function. I know I want to list out, you know, the number of outcomes. So I do sequence, okay, and I'm going to feed it with this number of outcomes. But here's the tricky thing here. Because I know that the first, you know, um, outcome there is like all of them having no's. N, 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 N. If I translate that to binary, that would be 0, 0, 0, 0, which for me is 0. So it means that I shouldn't be starting from number 1, you know, I should be starting from number zero so that when converted to binary, I can get that outcome. So what I'm going to do is rather than have my start as, you know, default, I'm going to start at zero. So instead of going from zero to um, one to 16, this is going to go from zero to 15. Okay, good. So you have that. Now, this is not the interesting part. The interesting part is when you bring in the deck to be in. Okay. So when you bring in the deck to be in, what it's going to do is just going to convert this from decimals to binary. Close the bracket here. Um, so you see them as binary numbers. So all those numbers, 0 to 15, this is what they are, you know, as binary. But there's also another challenge because follow my thinking here. I'm trying to get four digits so that when I have those four digits, because I know that, yes, in binary, of course, it's also sequential, just like in numbers, in this thing. So I'm like, if I can get those four digits, then I can spew the four digits from left to right, you know, so I can get the, um, you know, the option in each of those uh, cells from left to right. So... This is a challenge. It feels like, okay, how do I make this into four digits? There's more than one way to solve it, but the easiest is probably to use, you know, the deck to bin, its second argument. So I'm going to show you that. So if you put your cursor there and put a comma, you can see that the second argument of the deck to bin is places. This just tells you how many digits you want returned for the binary number. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it to this cell because if I have four items, I want four digits. Okay, so I'm going to tie it to that cell press enter now i have you know what i want okay so this pretty much is it you know if you're thinking of it from a binary stance point i can spew from left to right and i have you know zero 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 one and so on but what i may just do at this point is just to convert it you know to maybe what i need no yes but this is me just doing an extra with what i have i pretty much have solved the problem so i could do maybe a substitute function for example and say i want to substitute for zero, anywhere I have zero, I want to see no, right? I think I could take advantage of the fact that it's a skewed range and, you know, put an hash here, all right? So this is saying that anywhere you have zero, put N, but don't forget that anywhere you have one, I also want to put maybe Y for yes. So I could do a nested substitute, 
Okay, so I substitute again and say here, anyway, I have one. And I'm putting them in quotes because, you know, as in, these don't look like numbers to me, right? <laughs> so, and then I say Y. All right, so let's see what we have. Okay, so this pretty much is it. You know, I've converted from, you know, zeros to Ns and Ys. Now I can spill from left to right using the mid function. So I just take the mid function and I take this, you know, and then for my start norm, I want to start, you know, because I need to spill every character. So it means I'll start at character one, pick once at character two, character three, character four. So I'll use the sequence function again, right? But this time I'm not going to be using the rows. I'm going to be using the columns. Okay. So for the columns, how many columns do I want to spill this into? If I'm dealing with four items, obviously this will be four, so I can just tie it back to this cell still, right? So that this kind of spills for me. And then I put a comma one, right? And now I have it kind of broken down into, you know, four items. If this becomes three, you know, just adjust. If it becomes two, then it's easier. It's just no, 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 yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Close to five, you know, and now it's really, you know, scalable and dynamic. Okay, so that's really, you know, how I solved it. It was kind of, you know, fast, but in my head, I feel like, okay, maybe if I had more time, maybe I would have come up with something else, maybe something more intelligent or something more brilliant or ingenious. But this was what I could come up with at the time. And I felt, okay, good solution. Let me share this. So it means that, you know, um, you may have a better solution out there and I would really love you know, to see it so you can post that in the comment section okay so if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out